So if you are like me, I spent way too much time reading news articles this past week. Come on, man. So what I want to do in this very complicated season of life is to stop and actually read the word of God. Truthfully, no matter the results from the election, whether you are celebrating or you're disappointed, the mission of the church is the same. The mission of the church is the same. And and the mission specifically for City Lights is to bring light to people's lives so they can experience all that God has for them. And that's our mission. And what I want to do is just take a moment and read from a passage of scripture that will be our primary focus today in Psalm 46. I'm going to read verses 1 through 10. So come on. Um, let's go. If you have a Bible app, go ahead. If you have a real Bible in front of you, you can read it with me. Psalm, Psalm 46, it says this, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. I want you to keep that in your head. Always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and mountains tremble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble at the water surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God in the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city and it cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. This is awesome. Come on, check out this one. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. Come on, that's relatable, isn't it? But God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's army is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come and see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the earth. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shield with fire. And I want you to lean into this. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. So the title of my message today in part three of our In God We Trust series, Always Ready to help. Hey, pray with me wherever you are. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. We invite you in this time. We say, do what only you can do. We trust you in times of trouble, in times of uncertainty. God, I pray right now for peace to those who are dealing with mental health struggles. Peace to those who are dealing with emotional and spiritual struggles. Peace to those who are barely hanging on. We know that you always are ready to come in times of trouble. We need your help. We want more of you. In Jesus' name, amen. And type an amen in your comments just to let me know you're with me today. See, God is always ready to help in times of trouble. Now, what's interesting when we read scripture sometimes is sometimes we get really motivated, we get really hyped, we get really pumped about a scripture we read and we don't even know the context of the scripture. And, and, and what I want to do today is I want to give you context to the this portion of scripture that is very well known, that people know, be still and know that I am God. So, so what does that mean? Let's, let's check this out. Psalm 46. This is commonly believed to be a psalm that was written in 701 BC. Now watch this. I want you to check this out because I'm going to give you the context. Here's the context. When the evil king of Assyria attacks Jerusalem, that's it. I just gave you the context. This passage was written when the evil king of Assyria was ready to attack Jerusalem. Now, now for you to understand how incredibly impactful that one sentence is, I got you, I got to let you understand in 701 BC, when the evil king of Assyria attacked Jerusalem, it was intense. And it's unfair to us though. It's unfair to us because 
Because I don't know about you, but I never lived in a city that was really under attack. I never lived in a city, especially from someone as evil and as brutal as the Assyrian army. So, so again, the context of this scripture is, is God is speaking to his people when the evil and brutal Assyrian army is ready to attack. Who is the Assyrian army? What do you what what makes them so so horrific? The Assyrian army, they were the most effective and feared military force in the ancient world. This is the best way I can describe them. Have you ever seen the movie Taken with Liam Neeson? Imagine 185,000 Liam Neesons just coming at you all at once. This is the Assyrian army. They had a particular set of skills. They had the most advanced rep weaponry. They, 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 there was no other force that they had that, that, no one could, that no one could come against. They had the most strategic training. These warriors were brutal beyond measure. When they attacked the city, they just didn't want to destroy it. They wanted to destroy and completely humiliate and devastate the people. They would use psychological wear warfare they were they were sent tablets of 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 the kind of attacks and and, and and brutal torture they would do to their enemies before they invaded you know they, they they would they would battle and terrorize their enemies some people believe that the romans invented the crucifixions while some scholars actually believe the assyrians invented crucifixion the romans just perfected it they were so brutal that they were they were they were the flay men. They were they were flay people. Um, they were flay prisoners alive. They were, they would smell re they would reek once they flayed them. They would cut off their ears and their nose and their prisoners. The Assyrian warriors imagine this: if they kept if they captured someone, they would cut off their nose, cut off their ear, and they would wear it around their neck in a necklace. And what they would do to women and children well, it's unspeakable. It's unspeakable. They were horrible, they were brutal. So in this context, to God's people, God says, be still, be still. These people are about to come and attack Jerusalem. And God says, I'm always ready to help in times of trouble. So if you can imagine in a time of national turmoil where they felt utter hopelessness, the Spirit of God comes and brings them hope. And check this out, 2,700 years later, the same God that spoke to Israel speaks the same hope to us today, to be still and know that He is God. Psalm, Psalm 46.1 says, God is our refuge and our strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. And I love that phrase, he's always ready. The moment you're in trouble, God is ready to help you. The situation never catches God off guard. Did you know the thing that you're dealing with hasn't caught God off guard? God's not sitting back saying, oh, I didn't see that one coming. I didn't think that was gonna happen to you. God is always ready. It kind of makes me think of, of this. Uh, my daughter, Kingsley, her favorite new phrase is, let me do it. That's her favorite new phrase, let me do it. She is Miss Independent. Miss Independent, that's why I love her. her. Okay, maybe one day they'll let me on the worship team. So, see, two things that she wants me to let her do is this. One, she wants me to always let her put her clothes on, which is awesome. However, she has a hard time figuring out which hole her arm and her feet and her head goes into. The second one, which is way more dangerous, is she loves to climb up the the ladders at, 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 the, at the park, you know, on, uh, on the park by herself. And if I come up behind her to try to like help her, she's like, she's like, daddy, no, let me do it. So, so she wants to do this all by herself. Now the problem, I face as a parent is what's the line, what's the line of letting my kid grow and learn and how do I protect her from troubles she's unaware of? Where's the line? Where's the line? See, often, check this out, often people struggle with the concept of God because the problem of evil. The, you know, they, they will say, if, if God is God, and if this God you talk about is a God of love, then why do bad things happen to good people? Why do bad things happen in our world? Why is there a very clear evil presence in our world? 
Now I could devote an entire sermon series to that, maybe a year long sermon series, honestly, with community group curriculum to go along with it. But for the sake of time today, for the sake of time today, this is what the illustration I want you to get. Kingsley would probably, would not probably develop properly if I constantly put her clothes on and never gave her the opportunity to learn how to put her clothes on by herself. Kingsley would only stay on the baby equipment at the park if I didn't allow her to experiment and learn how to climb on the big kid obstacles. See, but what Kingsley often does not know, check this out, this is what I want you to get, what Kingsley often does not know, she does, when she's putting her clothes on by herself, I'm there to help her when she has her shirt on her head and she can't quite get her arms through or she can't quite get the shirt. I'm there, to, I'm in the back snugging the shirt on a little bit for her because guess what? I'm always ready in times of trouble. When she's climbing the ladder, my hand is beside her to catch her just in case she Falls. In other words, I'm always ready to help. Did you know that you may feel like, man, I'm alone. I don't know how I'm going to make this. I know what, but the thoughts that I'm having are dark. The feelings that I'm feeling are, 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 are consuming me. My anxiety is at an all-time high. I don't know how I'm going to make this. I feel like I'm in trouble. Did you know that when you're in the moment of your biggest trouble, God is ready to help? God is a loving father who is ready to intervene. Did you know that Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God with us, is God saying that he is not a God who is in heaven, out there, somewhere, but God is involved. He's involved in your life. He's ready to jump in to the field with you. God is always ready to help in times of trouble. Another verse says it like this. He is our ever present help in times of trouble trouble. I want to talk to you about this phrase because it's much richer than what we get in the English. Um, so check this out. The phrase comes from two Hebrew words. Um, the first one, nimsum, and the second one, mayad. Nimsum means to discover, encounter, experience, ever present. The best illustration I can use is like this. This is like, this is like Disney World. This is like Disney World. See, you may, if you have never been to Disney World, you may see the commercials, you may, you may wonder why people spend all their money on going on an expensive vacation like that. You may wonder why people walk around a park wearing Mickey Mouse ears on their head. And I can tell you about it. The commercials can show you something. But until you get to the park and until you experience Disney World, it isn't quite the same. See, it's not, it's not quite the same. This is Nimsum. You have to experience. Experience God. See, you can't just hear someone talk about God. You have to have an experience with God. And, and my prayer for, for you guys is that you would have an experience with the holy God who loves you, who's not against you, but for you. And that you would have an experience with God that will, that will solidify that he loves you and that he's for you. See, see, mayad means exceedingly, abundantly, exceedingly much. It's the muchness of God. There, there's lots and lots and much of God. See, in other words, in times of trouble, God overflows with his exceedingly abundant protection and provision and strength. The question is, though, how do we experience that? How do we experience God like that today in our own context as we face our own enemies? You might say, well, I don't live in Jerusalem and I'm not under attack by the Assyrians. But you may feel like you're under attack by other things. Maybe it's your mental health. Maybe it's your physical weight and your, in, in, in your physical health. Maybe it's working from home. Maybe it's trying to homeschool your kids. Maybe you got crazy family and Thanksgiving is right around the corner and you know you got to deal with them. Just type yep if you got some crazy family that you're about to see on Thanksgiving. Just leave, me, leave me a little yep. And if, and if you don't, if you're thinking, well, I don't actually have crazy family, I want you to know you're the crazy family member that everyone else is saying yep to right now. I'm just kidding. You're not crazy. We love you anyways. So what does this mean though? 
What does this mean for us today? What does God is our refuge and our strength, our ever-present help in time of trouble mean when we're feeling overwhelmed with anxiety? What does it mean when you're so uneasy that you stay awake at night because you're worried? What does it mean in the middle of a global pandemic when you might not feel safe, when your job may feel fragile? What does it mean when your marriage is hanging on by a thread? What does it mean when your children are struggling and you don't know how to help? What does it mean when your faith, which was once so strong and such a pillar for your life, isn't as strong as it once was? What does it mean? That our, what does it mean? It means this. It means that our God is exactly what you need when you need him. Our God is exactly what you need when you need him. And here's the better part. And he's so much more. He's so much more. He's your ever present hope in times of trouble. The goodness of God, which cannot be explained and it must be experienced. So that no matter what you're facing, God is for you in so much more. Who is God in your moment of need? Who is God in your moment of need? God is your peace in your moment of anxiety. When you're hurting, who is God? God is your comforter. Anytime you're lacking, God is your abundant provider. If you sin against God, the good news is that God is your righteousness. He is your salvation. He is your strength. And whenever you're weak and you feel like you don't have the power to go on, Jesus went to the cross for you. Jesus rose again from the grave for you. And the Bible declares the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in, lives in you. So when you feel like you can't go on, anymore. You have access to the power of God in your life. He is your light when your world feel, feels dark. Who is God? Whenever you're in times of trouble, he's your shield. He's your righteousness. He's your fortress. He's your rock. He's your defender. Our God is exactly what you need him to be in the moment that you need him. And our God is so much more, friends. He's so much more. Who is God? Who do you need him to be? Where are you hurting? Our God knows exactly what you're going through. And he's exactly what you need and so much more. In other words, our God is big enough to oversee the whole world. And he's loving enough to care about you. He's big enough to oversee the whole world but he's loving enough to care about you. The nations are under his throne, yet he is reigning and ruling, and he is sovereign, and he is powerful, and he is ever-present. He's an all-efficient God, and he knows the details of your life. See, I just can't tell you about him. I can't just tell you about him, but you see, here's the good news. Jesus says, come to me all all, not just a sum, not just a select, not just the elect, but all. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will bring you rest. Open your heart to him. Cry out to him. Lean into him. Get clingy to him. Depend on him. Whenever you draw near to God, Bible tells us that God draws near to you. Whenever you cry out to him, he steps towards you. See, the moment Kingsley says, I need you, daddy. I'm there. I'm there to be there for her. And guess what? I'm a weak and sinful man. And if I can respond to the cry of my daughter whenever she's in need, friends, imagine how much our perfect heavenly father responds to you. Imagine how he responds to you. The moment you need God, he delights in revealing himself to you. And this is exactly what you need in that moment and so much more. Come and open your heart and see the glorious deeds of the goodness of God that he is supreme. 
that he rules and reigns and he is loving enough to be involved in the intimate details of your life. Who is God? He's The Lord is our fortress. He's our rock, our shelter, our ever-present help in times of need. That's the part I like. That's the good part. Now I'm going to show you the part that bothers me, though. I'm going to show you the part that kind of bothers me. And, 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 and here you go. Sometimes when I read the Bible, I get bothered by what I read when I read it. And if, and if you never get bothered when you read the Bible, don't be so religious that you don't come to the Bible with your heart wide open. Don't, don't, you know, the, the Bible at times can bother you and convict you. And this part bothers me because imagine, now that I have the context, now that I know the context, the verse is so great. God is my ever-present hope, hope in times of need. Be still and know that I am God. Great verses. They're so encouraging. But now that I know the context, imagine it's 701 B.C., and imagine I'm living in that time and I'm a husband and I'm a dad and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm thinking of the Assyrian army that's about to come that I feared ever since I was a little kid and now they're coming to attack and I have no power and I have no ability to protect my family. See, so imagine the context now. The context of the story is that you're, you're that person. This army is coming to brutalize your family and you can't do anything. And I know what the Assyrians promised to do to the women and children. I don't have the power to stop it. And my assignment from God is this. Be still and know that I am God. Be still? God, you want me to be still? When everything I value, everything I love, everything I spent my whole life on trying to build and protect is jeopardized. And you're telling me I can't do anything to protect it. All I can do is to be still. Be still. Do you know how hard it is? I'm going to, you know how hard it is for me, like personally, Jacob, do you know how hard it is for me to be still? Let me put it this way. It took a world pandemic crisis and all of my plans to change in order for God to teach me how to be still. That's how reluctant I was to be still. I used to pride myself on how busy I was. I used to say, oh man, I used to work 60 hours a week. You know, if anyone, if someone walks up to you and they say, how you doing? Oh, I'm busy. Like that's like a good thing. That's not a good thing. If your first response to someone when they ask you how you're doing is, oh, I'm busy. That's not, but that was my first response. Oh, I'm busy. You know, I'm busy. I'm a busy person. I'm a busy, busy bee. And I used to pride myself on that, that I could raise a family, have a good marriage, go back to school, all while starting a church from ground zero. Be still? No, you got work, right? Be still. And if I'm being honest today, and I hope we can be honest while, while, while I'm preaching, this verse to me, this verse to me sometimes makes zero sense. It's just kind of stupid in some ways to me. Be still and know that I am God. It sounds something that you would put on a nice little coffee mug, but how do you even live that out? Be still. Be still. You, got, you want me to be still when I got all this pressure, when I got all these things, I got all this fear, all this anxiety, all this worry, all this, this, that, bills, and all this. You want me to be still and know that you are God? And the reason why I didn't like to be still is because when I'm still, I can't be in control. Come on. I'm going to let that one hit for someone. I'm going to let that one hit for you today. The reason why we have a hard time at being still and, and, and allowing God to work is because we can't be in control when we're being still. When I'm still, I can't voice my opinion. I can't fix anything. I can't fix the problems. I can't fix what's going on. I can't work myself to death trying to prove to someone that I'm something. When I'm being still, I can't do these things. Here you go. There are some battles in your life that only God can win. 
There are some battles in your life that only God can win. And there are some times and some seasons where your only assignment is to be still and know that he is God. Be still and know that he is who he says he is. See, here you go. You can't undo your loved one passing away. You can't undo that affair. You can't undo that layoff. You can't undo that childhood hurt that is now playing out in your present world. But God is often more concerned about the battle within than the battle around you. I'm going to say that one more time. God is often more concerned about the battle within you than the battle around you. See, notice that the text doesn't say, be worried and know that I'm God. It doesn't say, be freaked out, be high strung, be over anxious and know that I am God. It doesn't say, be an idiot on social media and know that I'm God. It says to be still. It says to be still. And even that Hebrew word for be still means to be quiet. It means to relax. This word means to give yourself a break. Funny, man, God is actually telling you, you need to chill out. You need to relax. He's telling you that this problem that you're going through, man, it's above your pay, your pay grade. You don't got the IQ to handle it. There are some battles that are battles for the Lord to fight. And your only assignment in the battle is to be still. It's to be still and give yourself a break because our God is big enough to oversee the whole world and he's loving enough to care about the intimate details in your life and be still and know that he is a God that is for you and not against you, that he's with you and won't attack you. You got to know him. You got to know him. And this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. The story goes like this. The Assyrians are coming to attack. And if you want to read the whole story, I encourage you to read. Um, you can write this down. Second Chronicles 32 or Second Kings 19. It's the same story, but two different versions of the story. And here's what happens. Here's what happens. The Assyrians plan their attack. The king of Jerusalem prayed one prayer. And what do you think our God did? The God who was always ready to help. You ready for this? You ready for the climax of the story? When the king prayed, our God sent one angel. He sent one angel. One angel. And this one angel dismantled 158,000 Assyrian warriors and protected the people of God. One angel. It didn't take a legion of angels. It didn't even take God's favorite 10 angels. It just took one angel. It took one angel. And when I read the story, it's crazy to me that that one angel dismantled this Assyrian army and the reason why it's crazy to me, here you go, friends, I want you to get this. I want you to lean, in, lean into this. The reason why it's crazy, because oftentimes we try to overcome spiritual battles with our logical perspectives. We try to overcome spiritual hurt, spiritual warfare with logical approaches. See, and I'm not, and I'm not saying that you can't be logical. I actually do believe faith is, act, is actually logical in a lot of degrees. But here you go. The battle that you're facing right now, it may not be a logical thing. It may not just be, oh, this happened and this happened and this happened and this is why I feel this way. Yes, there is things to that. But did you know that there is an enemy who is out to still kill and destroy? Did 
because you know that there's an enemy who does not want you to succeed, that does not want you to experience all that God has for you. And God is more concerned with the spiritual battles within than the things happening around you. The truth is this, the truth is this, that until we change our hearts, the things around us won't change. The things around us aren't going to change. We can't change our external things and think the internal is going to change. It starts internal. It starts in our hearts. And out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And I love this, that it says just one angel, that God said an angel. And some of you, this is what you need. You need just one angel. You need just one song, one answered prayer, just one sermon, one, one word, just one moment in the presence of God. And when he says, be still, church, he's talking to you. He's saying, be still, mom. Be still, dad. Be still, my child. And know in a way that can't be described, but only experience that our God is always ready to help. So my question for you is this, what do you need? And what do you need God to be? Who do you need God to be in this moment? Because our God is exactly who you need and so much more. And he's always ready to help in times of trouble. Pray with me. God, we thank you. We thank you that you're always ready to help. That you're always ready to help. And I even feel this right now. There's some people, you are fighting a fight that is not yours to fight. You're fighting a fight that's not yours to fight. Yep, and I even see, yeah. The tools you're using to fight is over drinking. Mm-hmm. The tools you're using to fight is is heavy worry and anxiety, crushing anxiety. The tools you're using is anger and lashing out on people. Yep, and isolation. There's some of you who are isolated. because there's a battle that you're trying to fight by yourself. And I just feel the Holy Spirit right now saying, be still and know that he is God. And God is also, just in this moment, has reminded me of a scripture where Jesus had thousands of people following him and he preached a message and literally the Bible says thousands left him and only 12 remained, the 12 disciples left. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, aren't you gonna leave? And Peter says, where will we go? We know that you have the words of life. And that word know that Peter said, wasn't just like, oh, I know this and I know that. It It was a deep, I know you are the Holy One of God. And I feel like God is trying to speak that to some people right now. It's time for you to know that he is the Holy One. Not just know about him in your head, but know God in your heart. Because when you know God, that's your first step at finding freedom. So come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Do what only you can do. We be still and we know that you are God, that you're always ready to help in times of trouble. And last, that is like the Holy Spirit is saying, always ready to help. Cry out to God. Say, God, I need your help. And watch how God intervenes in your life. God, we love you and we need you. In Jesus' name, amen.